please throw them into the chat box now. Um, but we're going to move on to, a, I would say, the most important point of this session. And we're going to start looking at, um, you know, what is it that salespeople need to start doing to improve their core skills and capability? Um, really, really super important. I'm going to end this poll and I'm going to share those results just for a few seconds while I talk about the next poll. So we want to... Um, we need to look at the types of activities and resources that salespeople, myself, John's doing every day uh, in order to improve. We should always improve. The best pilot in the world, he doesn't stop learning how to fly a plane. A pilot has to do a simulator every, I think it's every six months. My dad was a pilot for British Airways. And um, they don't just, you know, you don't just say, hey, that's it, you're done. And now go fly a plane and we'll see you, you know, when you retire. Um, it's called, they're constantly improving processes, procedures. Something falls off a plane. Why did that happen? Like two pilots argue with each other. Well, we need to bring in some sort of training to make sure pilots work well together, right? So it's a, it's a constant learning um it's, it's it's a constant learning exercise right so all right so if everyone's got those results now i'm going to bring us on to the next poll please be interactive on this and again chat box is open for you to uh, have any input uh, on this outside of <clears throat> what we already have in there or just your own opinion just please go ahead so so what sales development resources have you as sales have i made a mistake there no i've just put some gaps sales leaders professionals invested in over the last 12 over the last and over the last 12 months, you can tell I was rushing this through when I was writing this up last night. Anyway, um, yeah, so what sales development resources have you as sales leaders or professionals or country managers or um, whatever it may be, have you invested in over the last 12 months? So I can see the results coming in there. So we'll get that started. All right. Um, so this is really important. You need to actively start putting together resources and tools that are going to help you succeed as a sales professional. I would personally recommend, and feel free to jump in, John, if you've got another uh, on your view on this. I really respect your um, your experience and skill set on this. But but start with a mentor, right? I, I personally have maybe 10 different people that I call up every now and then and ask them for help. Um, and I owe these people when I next fly into Australia amounts, amounts of dinners and wine. Um, but these people, guy, I don't. It, it's, it's like take everything like a pinch of salt. One mentor will tell you one thing. One mentor will tell you something else. They're not necessarily right. They're not necessarily wrong, right? But listen to them and, and, and talk to them. Help them as much as they help you in order to identify things that you should start be doing. I mean, if someone says, go and read a book, oh, I'll go and find the, the top 10 sales books that I should be reading. That's great. But what relevance is it to you? Do you need to improve your discovery skills? Do you need to improve your presentation skills? Do you need to improve um, you know, the, the, your listing skills, your your storytelling skills, right? Find stuff that's relevant to you, right? So, um, I, mean, I mean, John, what would you start? What would you recommend starting with? I mean, I, personally, for me, I'd go to a mentor and, I, and then I'd start looking for some sales books on things that I would uh fill things that i feel that i would be interested in reading but also need to, to be learning about to improve right so and would you start with sales books podcasts i mean what what's your what's your personal sort of recommendation on that to the audience well let me go back to what you were talking about and that's mentor sure. um first of all i agree with you uh, we all need mentors we all need coaches and it doesn't necessarily need to be your managers or or, or necessarily need to be somebody in your own organization uh, in fact, I can see some names up here. Tom Langley. Tom Langley was a mentor of mine. There you go. Uh, good to see you here, Tom. Um, but we all need a mentor. And, and if you're out there struggling and you've got nobody to talk to and say, you know, share your experiences, etc., then you've got to go and find people. Uh, absolutely critical. We all need to work with others. Yeah. Now, the other thing I, uh, I do is, is uh, and recommend very strongly are peer groups. Mm -hmm. Now get a get a group of people that are all in the same sort of role as you, but probably mm -hmm. not competing because you don't want to be sharing competitive information. And and get together every you know in this day and age maybe on Zoom or you know, if they're local and you can you get out and you know, have a cup of coffee together you know, once a once a month or whatever and and just hey how did you you had this sort of problem I have too how would you go about handling it. Uh, and learning from each other. So you raise a really good point there. Uh, peer groups and mentoring, uh, mm -hmm. absolutely critical to our own self-development. Sorry, what was your question then? No, that, that's okay. No, you you, um, you answered it in a different way, but I'll... Um... So no, yeah, so 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 what would you recommend starting with? Yeah, a mentor, um, someone helps. So, so in terms of, I guess, if, if, if you were to say um to someone what 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 book should you should you start reading right or what podcast I and mean, what what would you get would get so 
would, would it depend on that individual's learning capabilities, what they prefer? Uh, what would you recommend to someone on the types of things that they should be doing to, to, to activities to improve their sales development? Well, I said earlier that we all learn differently. There's, yeah. there's multiple ways in which we learn. Uh, so we all need to think about how we develop our, our how we learn and, and what, what learns best. Now, you, yeah, you mentioned books. Yep. What, the reason I wrote a novel is a lot of us like to read novels, but we can't read textbooks. Yeah. Uh, and a novel uh, written well, uh, I've written, I've read a few business novels in the past that are absolutely atrocious novels. <laughs> uh, and the one thing that I really worked hard to do was get the, I had two co-authors and one of them is a, is, is, has become a, a, a renowned novelist. He's brilliant. And so without him, we couldn't have got the message over. But, the, yeah. but you know, if, if you like a good novel, then there's, there's um, novels out there, business novels that you can learn from, uh, and the Wentworth Prospects one. Um, I, I hate textbooks. You know, I, mm-hmm. I, get, I buy every new sales book that comes out, I tend to buy. You know, I mean, I just can't help myself. Uh, but I flip through them. I'll, I'll you know, I'm, I might only spend half an hour on a new book I've read. I get, get the gist of what's in it. I know yeah. where to go as a reference book, and then I'll move on to the next one. Uh-huh. Um, that's the way I learn. I can't read a textbook. Well, I call it a textbook. A can't typical sales book. I can't pick up and read from cover to cover. Uh-huh. Uh, I just find it uh, inappropriate for my learning. Whereas I can read a novel. Um, but it's not just that. I mean, listening. Yeah, all books these days, n- nearly all books, have an audio uh-huh. that goes with them. Uh, nearly all books um, have a, 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 a online version, yeah. a, a, an e-book, uh, and, and then you've got the printed version. Now, a lot of people love a printed book, uh-huh. but these day, this day and age, yeah, the 65%, uh, I heard the other day, of sales books in the US uh-huh. uh, are being sold as audio books. So that tells you something. If we get in the habit of listening whenever we're doing leisure work or driving or whatever, there's a great opportunity to learn. And, and a lot of us are very good audio learners. Not all, mm-hmm. not all. So if you're not a good audio learner, this is not a recommendation that you can make, uh, take sense of. I see you put some recommended reads up there. Um, I thought it was about time we stuck that one up. Yeah, no, I thought that would be good um, <laughs> from a talking point. Uh, I mean, yeah. I, I could give you a list of 100 books, um, mm-hmm. and, but I like, I like your list here. Um, seven stories, if, if anybody's... Uh, not read that seven stories that uh, every salesperson must tell by uh, Mike Adams. Um, really good book. And, and we as salespeople need to develop that skill to tell a story. Mm. And it's not just simply telling a story. We have to know how to tell a story and know when to use the right sort of stories during our sales process. And that's what that book's all about. So, um, and, and there's an audio version of that book as, as well. I've never, I don't mm. know, never splits. Spin selling. Yeah. If you haven't read Spin Selling, uh, it's a, what is it, 1980 book or whatever about. So, yeah. um, and, and you've written there, the Bible of selling. I agree. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. It's the, if you want to learn how to properly sell, properly ask questions, the right framework for questions and so on, Spin Selling is brilliant. Wayne Maloney, your roadmap to achieving sales success, a great handbook for salespeople. Mm-hmm. Uh, particularly new sales people, yeah, pick that up, read it, refer to it, be, make it become your support book. Um, would recommend it very strongly. Um, the Perfect Close by James Muir. I'm jumping over the ones I don't know, by the way. Um, oh, sorry, Succeed Without Selling. That's what won mm. the, the gold award recently. It, it, there's, there's another th- recommendation, Top Sales World, which is a magazine based out of the UK, is the, uh, the the biggest and most wide, widespread uh, read magazine in the world in the world of B two B sales, so you should be um, regis- uh, registering to get to get that every month uh, and read that. And of course, out of that, they publish lots and lots of articles and so on, written by some some great thinkers in the in the sales world. Now they recently, and they every year they run an awards set of awards. One of which is the best sales and marketing book. So Diane Helberg, Helbing won that with Succeed Without Selling. You've got to go and read that one. It's it's the uh, it's the best book of the year in sales. And of course, the silver medal went to the Wentworth Prospect, our book. So um, uh, we're very proud of that. 
And that's a very good read, John. Like uh, read or or audio. Like I said, I couldn't put it down or I couldn't stop listening. I'm I'm seventy percent of the way through. Um, but it's just a great story. It's got um, some nice twists in it, and you can relate to it as well, right? You can relate to it from a corporate perspective and and also to a personal things that happen in our own lives. So it's it's been and it is, it very is well. a model. It, it is a it novel. Is, it's, yeah. it's people getting killed. There's all sorts yeah. of things happening. So yeah, a lot of fun. Very good. And there's some others worth mentioning. I mean, there's, there's my uh, my own uh, book. So feel free if, if you're uh, looking for how to find the perfect fit client, maybe you're new to sales, you're not as experienced and you, you know, you, you're you not sure you start working with a prospect client and you've got to, you're thinking, are they going to be a tire kicker? Are they, are they, are they going to be wasting my time? And um, look, take a look at mine, um, 99 cents on Amazon, or you can buy the book if you like, and it'll just give you a bit of a guide to run through to see if they're a perfect match client, you know, ask yourself questions. So, you spend only maybe a few hours with them as opposed to a few weeks and months and then only find out that they're even if you sign them up they're like the worst clients you've brought in on on ever and you know they actually won't make your business any money um a couple of others worth mentioning um if that's okay john tony hughes books um i the first book i read um actually what got me back into it was combo prospecting by tony hughes now i kind of agree and disagree with with a lot of the things in here but one thing it taught me was a multiple communication method so I never, I never really SMSed anyone cold, um, or it would only be SMSing a client if I was trying to reach them, right? And I'm here based in the Philippines, um, and I've got a couple of SIM cards in my phone, and a UK one, an Australian one, and a local one. Um, and I didn't, I just didn't realise the approach of the fact that if you really need to reach someone and you've got a compelling message and you need to pull them out of that world, um, this book will teach you how to do that. Um, you know messaging on LinkedIn and you're an SMSing and um, calling, leaving voice messages and it pulls someone out the world but of their busy world, but make sure you use the right compelling message. Otherwise you just annoy people. Um, and tech powered sales. Um, like if I was to compare tech powered sales and Wentworth Prospect, Wentworth Prospect is a great, like it's, it's a great listening, a, a great novel, right? You listen to it, you hear a story with tech powered sales. If you want to learn and pick and, pin out all the best technologies out there for automation and sales. Um, that's what I used it for. Other people use it for different things. But for me, I jumped on that book and I went, you know what? I need to learn of all the all the different AI techs out there for sending emails, for finding phone numbers, and I'm going to do a demo with every single one, right? So that, 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 that was more... The, the benefit I received from that, um, or I'm jumping ahead now, but but I would start with the Wentworth Prospect, uh, even above my own book. I just think that's a that it's one of those ones that you can listen when you're half tired and half asleep from doing a 12 hour day. It's it's a really great, uh, really great listen. That one, a really great read, definitely. So so uh, we've talked a lot there about books, but there's lots of other channels for learning. Um, one that I find very valuable podcasts uh, and there's some really good podcasts out there just to mention mm. a few Andy Paul I forget what he calls it uh, mm-hmm. in the US he, he does a great podcast I just got, got to listen to his bloody advertisements that's anything <laughs> but you know once you're through that uh, the content is brilliant he's always interviewing people that are outstanding um, Paul Watts um, uh, again, I can't remember the name of uh, what is it. It doesn't matter, but th- he runs a podcast uh, with some brilliant um, people that he interviews, and he does it very well. Mm-hmm. He's a Canadian-based guy. Um, here in Australia, um, Steve, Stephen Norman runs a great podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, all of these, look up on LinkedIn, find the podcast, and and uh, listen to one or two. And if you like one or two podcasts, they, these guys typically put out at least one a week. Uh, mm-hmm. and um, they're really good listening. Um, and, and there again, it's, you know, if you're driving to and from work or wherever you're going uh, every every week, listen to a podcast mm-hmm. at least once a week, uh, and, and it's good learning. Uh, a lot of online training available too, so go mm-hmm. out there. I, you know, the, the, the straight online training, I've, I've had a lot of feedback that people don't find them high value and they never complete mm-hmm. it. But yeah, there's a lot that's good out there. Uh, Sales IQ is one here in Australia. Um, they, uh, they have some really good sale, uh, online training. Um, and Tony Hughes is part of that organisation, along with uh, Luigi Prestonenzi. Um, so there's just to name a few. Um, if, and it's, it's really community-based learning. I put together the sales, the sales masterminds uh, which for me is a peer group. So it's a whole lot of guys uh, like me that are 
making a big difference in the world of sales. And we get together and talk you know, uh, once a month or thereabouts and share uh, what's working, what's not working in the sales world and in our own businesses and so on. That's the sort of stuff. And I, and I couldn't, I, you know, sales leader forums, by the way, we run peer groups for sales leaders. Um, but, you know, if you want a peer group for a salesperson, you know, just go reach out, find out who you can get together with and formally get together once a month and, and compare notes and learn from each other. Great ways to learn. Thanks, John. Um, another one that I just thought of, actually, I had to quickly stick it in Google to, to remind myself, and it was written in the 50s, which very much, uh, honestly, when I read this and, and I looked at how it was written so many years ago and in, re and in relation to um, today's methodologies and how things have changed, it, it just completely resonated. Um, the Magic of Thinking Big, John, I don't know if you've come across that one by David Swartz. Yep absolutely brilliant book a friend of mine gave me an old tattered book it must have gone on to six or seven other people now that that is one of the and I only and i only read 70 percent of it but again it was one of those books that just changes the way that you think the uh, glass half full glass half empty right um but it just helps you to really understand um the dynamics of and and and, and it's, it's funny like well, what i what we generally find is if your home life is a mess you know you're going through a, a, a relationship issues um generally your business or your work's going to get affected right there's, there's this balance right that you've got to try and equate but if you can if you can change the way your mind works you can kind of have both working correct right but if if one or two aren't, aren't correct or if all of them are falling apart then you've got to you've got to start fixing things right hey we, we got some recommendations from the audience john uh for some books so i'll just read them out um i'm not sure if this is a book or a um a podcast uh, negotiation ninja that sound does sound familiar in some ways from chris chilton um and the brutal truth about sales and selling podcasts i've heard of this i've I, I've, I've had some positive uh, insights about this i haven't personally uh, listened to this um, but it's going on my list now um deep listening by oscar trimble have you heard of that one john does that come a sorry what was it uh, deep listening by oscar trimboli oh no yes i have i have okay. i've actually got a copy of that here yes very good. Um, so there's a couple. Uh, I mean, of, there, there, there's some really good books there on uh, yeah. on mindset, getting the mindset right, and how mm -hmm. to do that. Um, you know, one of the one of the blights that a lot of companies uh, do to our industry is they teach people to sell their product. And it's all about feature, function, benefit of products, not about the customer. And and uh, anything that help us get our mindset back on the customer and and be there to help the customer through a buying journey to achieve an yeah. outcome rather than here's our product feature function benefit you should buy it Mr Customer yeah. uh, will change the prof your professionalism so mindset mm -hmm. and getting the right mindset around yeah. sales is absolutely critical some really good books around that that was Sean Walsh yeah that thanks for that that's the um, the brutal truth about sales and selling podcast and um, so this is the uh the book that you, that you give to your new sales people um oh so no sorry that wasn't that one it's how i raised myself from failure to success and selling be uh, better um oh sorry been selling by frank Bed betger brilliant no no let's let's take a note of that one as well I, I have heard i have heard of that book and i haven't read it so that's going on my book list my book list is getting bigger and bigger john <laughs> i've got to start reading faster or listening faster that's good well, how Great. many books a year how many books a year do you read matt I, I only go through one, uh, last year it was one a month, uh, or one a month and a half. And then, um, my wife became pregnant and things got busy and life got in the way. And then it was one every two months and, and then over Christmas, none. Um, and I've just started again. I've, I'm, well, I'm nearly through yours. So that'll be the first one for January. Uh, although, although I did technically start that at Christmas. So yeah, one, one a month. Um, I don't know if that's enough. Yeah, that's fine. If you're, yeah. I mean, if, if, if any, if uh, people set their objectives on getting one mm. book a month and it doesn't have to be a sales book, by the way, but yeah, yeah. one, one self-development book a month, uh, you're doing pretty well. Yeah, and if, if, if you don't like reading, then listen to the audio of those books. And I find mixing them up as well. You don't have to just read or listen to one book. You can switch between different ones. I find that helps me depending on my mood. I'm like, oh, I don't really want to, you know, I don't feel like a novel today. I'm going to leave the Wentworth and I'm going to read, I'm going to read an article or I'm going to listen to an actual, a novel, but a, a non-sales related novel. I want to read some fiction, right? You can mi mi like mix them up as well, right? So, you know, you're not, um, you don't want to overdo it, but okay, if, what, what once a month seems to be okay. So um, that's what, 
Well, that's the general feedback that I get from people, um, but it's just sticking to it. That's the hard part. So look, we're going to cover some of the polls results for the last five minutes. And if anyone's got any questions, please, um, we're in our final five minutes of the session. So this is a time to pick um, not only my brain, but John's brain as well on any questions on the subject. Um, but, but if we look at the third poll, it seems that um, I would say most people are watching webinars. So that's great. We've got a few people on this webinar today. Um, so that's, that seems to be the most popular method of, of learning, followed by books, um, then podcasts, videos, online training. Um, but funny, John, I remember we were chatting a few days ago around customer domain knowledge. That, that seems to be on the lowest at 35%, right? And I'm, it's interesting how that, uh, if, if, if it may, maybe it was misread, but maybe not customer domain knowledge being the knowledge um your understanding your customers right their industry their dynamics no, right we, we we need to we need as salespeople, the number one thing we need to be able to do is have a conversation with the client about their business yeah, absolutely. and if we don't have domain knowledge about you know, some aspects of their business we can't have those conversations uh, we'll have them in it create any value through that conversation for the client to me domain knowledge is much much more important than product mm -hmm. knowledge mm -hmm. Uh, and so uh, it's it's something we need to learn. Um, it, it's funny. Sue, the, the the Wentworth prospect, the, the heroine name is Sue. Mm. Sue um, is based on a, a true character that I was coaching going back a few years ago now. Wow. Uh, okay. and, and I uh, helped to. You know, I said, you know, you've got to build your personal brand. You've got to build yeah. the main knowledge out there. You've got to be have. And she was selling to the banking industry. Mm. Uh, and she went out of her way to attend conference, banking conferences and, and listen to all the conversations that are happening in the banking world, uh, read uh, banking magazines and a whole host of things. She became, she was able to go in and hold a conversation with any senior banker and, and hold, it, hold her stead peer-to-peer -peer conversation. To me, that's what a salesperson needs to do. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, building your, your knowledge and capability around uh, some aspect of the customer's domain, domain is critical. Very good. And I 100% agree. And it's something that I personally try to do. Like you find a specialist in, you know, what are you selling? Who are you selling to? Pick uh, an industry. Okay, it's technology, right? Which part of technology are you selling to? You're selling to cybersecurity, ERP, um, you know, whatever it may be, right? And then, and then find companies that match that. And then from there, um, understand how those organizations work, what's happening in the industry, well, how is cybersecurity developing, what's going on with hackers, all that sort of stuff. Just understand that and also find out what events are going on, see what the C-level executives are up to on LinkedIn and what they're attending as well. And it's pretty soon when you jump on the phone with these people, um, you'll actually be able to have really intelligent conversations and they won't be saying, why are you calling me? Oh my God, is this a cold call? This is, oh no, this is the bad worst time because you're talking their language, right? So absolutely, I 100% and agree with that statement. Great. Now, given that we have uh, three minutes left, so we've done well, we've, we've covered most things uh, for this entire session, which we normally run out of time. So I'm very happy that we're uh, at this point. Uh, any last questions, throw them in. Um, if not, we'll start wrapping up. Okay. Um, thank you everyone for joining today's session. I hope it was useful. I will be sending everyone that attended the list of books and other stuff that you can, you know, you can take a look at, uh, including my own and definitely John's book. But I'd highly recommend get, you know, start listening, listening or, or reading John's uh, The Wentworth Prospect, but also look at some of those other books as well and, and find a mentor that's going to help you. Um, and just, just get, you know, stick it in your calendar every day at a certain time and stick to it, right? It's like a date night. That's something I need to work on more. You know, you have a date night, it's, it's locked in, nothing gets in the way and, 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 and that's, that, that's it, right? It's, it's, in the, uh, it's in the calendar. So um, yeah, the, 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 I did have a bit of a, I'll send the first five attendees, I can't name them now, but I'll bring up the list. I'll send you a, a physical copy of my book. I'll reach out to you later. That's, that's just from my end. Um, yeah, anything else you want to add, John, before we sort of sum up? For, uh, uh, I'm just looking at some of the names out there attending this thing. And I've, I've got to say, it. there's people I know well, uh, and they will know some of the people we've worked with in the past. Uh, if you get the Wentworth Prospect, ha, um, just see if you recognize any characters in the book. You'll find it quite interesting. Well, and Karen, it's great to have you on this session. Um, you know, we haven't, well, the last time we met was probably down the uh, CVIT, which uh, I believe we're going to have again. It's called SMB Digital in Sydney. And um, and I've got some great news. Um, they've taken quarantine and stuff away. So I'm looking forward to flying into Sydney and, and, and 
hopefully doing some face-to-face stuff. So uh, that's really, really exciting. So um, yeah, and no, I look forward to if I meet meeting any anyone on the uh, on our attendee list. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a great session today. And um, yeah, you'll receive stuff via email. John, thank you. Most importantly, really appreciate you attending today. And uh, yeah, have a great My pleasure, afternoon. Mate. My pleasure.